it is common to talk about high and low self-esteem as if they are two different types of people. Now, it is true that high and low self-esteem are really different people psychologically in different ways, but I need to emphasize that the people are basically on a continuum. Self-esteem scores are actually spread along the range uh, with lots of people in the middle. So high, what's high and low self-esteem are relative. Now, the high self-esteem, and we can understand pretty well what high self-esteem people are like. They think they're pretty good, they want to succeed, they expect to succeed, they want others to like them, they expect that, and so on. People with low self-esteem pose more of a puzzle to psychologists and researchers. What is it that they want? Do they want to confirm these negative views of themselves? Do they want to fail? Do they have fear of success? Like, oh, if I become too good, everything will fall apart, people won't like me? Do they just not know what they want? Um, so there are multiple theories about them. Uh, some people say people with low self-esteem have self-loathing. They think they deserve to suffer. Others say they want to confirm their bad opinions of themselves, so it's about being consistent. I think I'm bad, so I just want confirmation or approval of that. Over the years, researchers have studied this. The answer has gradually become clear, and I think there is an emerging consensus. People with low self-esteem want pretty much the things people with high self-esteem want. Their desires are the same. They want to be loved, they want to succeed, but they don't expect it as much. People with high self-esteem kind of assume it will happen, they're sometimes shocked when it doesn't. People with low self-esteem don't really think it's going to happen to be loved and successful and all that. When it does, they're sometimes a little skeptical, like this might be too good to be true. They don't expect success, so their orientation is a little different. And without that, they, they tend to be more focused on avoiding disaster than on achieving success. So low self-esteem gets to be a kind of muddling through mentality. Uh, and remember, there are not very many people who have the extremely low views of themselves. We're talking instead about the people who, uh, uh, who have people who might be called intermediate self-esteem. So there are two kinds. They're the people who are really convinced of the favorable views of themselves, and others uh, who are sort of in the middle of the scale, mixed, uncertain, tentative. Uh, uh, researcher Campbell built this into a major theory about low self-esteem. She called it self-concept confusion. Uh, that people just don't know themselves with people with low self-esteem. Uh, so you can put it this way, high self-esteem is the presence of the belief that I am great. Low self-esteem is not the presence of the belief that I am terrible, it's just the absence of the view that I'm great. So, and if you look at what people with low self-esteem are actually saying on the self-esteem scale, they're not saying, I'm a terrible person, I'm awful. Rather, they're saying, I'm not sure, I'm somewhat good to some extent, partly good, partly bad, sometimes this. Uh, Campbell showed also they'll change their minds, they'll contradict themselves. If you give them an I don't know option when you ask them about themselves, they, they check that op option more. So uh, in general, there's this pattern. Uh, uh, people with low self-esteem are more likely to say, I'm not sure, I don't know. Ultimately, it's more of a garbled self-concept uh, than a clear view of oneself as a bad person. So uh, low self-esteem has this confusion aspect. They're more oriented toward protecting themselves from failure uh, than toward uh, trying to achieve success. Now, of course, when you take a test, uh, achieving success is the same as avoiding failure. You try to give right answers to the test. But sometimes you have a choice between protecting and enhancing. I remember walking across uh, one of those uh, town squares, I think it was in, in Amsterdam, with a woman who had somewhat low self-esteem. Uh, people were out on the square, they have those giant chess sets with great big pieces which are as high as a person, uh, and the board is uh, built into the ground, and people move the pieces around and so on. And I paused to watch them uh, for a little while, and, and finally she said, why would anyone do this, play chess out in public like this? And I said, well, come on, it's fascinating. You go out there and you play chess against the stranger, you try out your skills, it's kind of exciting. But her view was, yeah, but you could look like such an idiot. Well, that's the low self-esteem response. I don't want to go out and take a chance to perform in front of others because I could look like a fool. The low self-esteem goal is protect yourself. Don't take the chance. The high self-esteem response is, oh, look, I'm going to try it. I'm not going to worry about failure because I don't usually fail. This will be a chance to achieve some new glory. Uh, so in a ca calling attention to yourself, taking chances, and so on, these are the things that a low self-esteem person tries to avoid. Uh, they're much more easily persuaded by other people's arguments. They do what other people tell them. 
Uh, they're more gullible, if you were, if you will. <clears throat> um, high self-esteem people, uh, not so much. Even when they're given good advice, uh, they have more confidence in their own judgment. Uh, and as I said, people with low self-esteem uh, give up a little more in the in the face of failure. <clears throat> 